So a new topic, although it's closely related to an old topic, this being rational functions. And the old topic that rational functions are related to are polynomials. A rational function is defined to be a polynomial divided by another polynomial. So, I mean, for example, just sort of at random, but something like, I mean, 2x squared minus x plus 1 is a second degree polynomial, and x cubed plus x minus 2 is a third degree polynomial. So this is a rational function. It's one polynomial divided by another. Um, rational functions have so much variation in their graphs that they're very hard to talk about kind of in generality. I mean, I'd like to go to Desmos and let's just look at a few rational functions. X squared divided by X squared plus six. This is a rational function. This is a second degree polynomial. This is a second degree polynomial. Say x squared plus six x minus five. Desmos does not like that. Let's put these parentheses in divided by x squared plus x minus one. I mean, this is also a polynomial. Let me, maybe that that is kind of blending in. There we go. This is also a polynomial. And I mean, compared to this purple curve, which is staying close to the x-axis, you see the second curve is going up here. It's going down here. It's a very different shape. Compared again to, let's say, x to the sixth plus 5x to the fourth minus x cubed plus x plus 1 divided by O divided by x. Uh, I did not mean to have that 45th. Let's get rid of that divided by x to the seventh. So here are three, um, three rational functions. They all look very different. It's a very chaotic situation. So we've got to just adjust our expectations and ask ourselves, okay, well, what information can we get about rational functions? I mean, don't worry about the stuff we can't do. Ask about the stuff we can do. And there are two things, there are really 
three features of rational functions I want to talk about. We'll do two of them today, two of them Monday. I mean, one of them Monday. I want to talk about roots, first of all. And this is, or hopefully is, a familiar word. We spent some time talking about the roots of polynomials. Where is a rational function equal to zero? Speaking graphically, where is a rational function hitting the x-axis? Well, the answer to this is in one sense straightforward. In another sense, it can require a fair amount of work, but a rational function is a polynomial divided by another polynomial, and we're setting this equal to zero. So what we could do here is we could take both sides of this polynomial and multiply them both by Q of X, by the denominator of this fraction. And if you do that, you wind up with P of X equal to zero. So kind of a good news, bad news situation, I guess. Fine, setting on um, a rational function equal to zero and finding its roots doesn't require any new techniques. To set a rational function equal to zero, we set a polynomial equal to zero. That's the good news. Bad news, finding the roots of polynomials is kind of a pain. So finding the roots of rational functions, also kind of a pain. But at least conceptually, we know how to do it. Let's find any and all roots of x cubed plus x squared plus one all divided by x minus two. Well, according to what I just said, all we're going to do is take the top of this fraction and set it equal to zero. We're not even going to worry about that denominator. You'll just have x cubed plus x squared plus one equal to zero. And now you remember what I said, this is sort of good news, bad news. Um, we don't have any good way of solving this equation by hand. So to actually finish out and find the root, It is the calculator. 
Now, I don't really regard that as bad news. It's my impression that some students are not so fond of this. Let me, let me make sure I have this copy down correctly. X cubed, X squared, one. Yes, we are missing a square. Let's get it in there. And let's take a look. Looks as if this polynomial has one root around here. Go to the calc menu, second trace, zero. Scroll to the left, scroll to the right, scroll near the root. Negative one point four six six. If we are rounding to three decimal places, which is kind of my default. So this is a root of the top. It's a root of x cubed plus x plus one. But according to what I said earlier, this is also a root of this entire rational function. So finding roots of rational functions comes down to setting polynomials equal to zero. Maybe you're doing that by hand. Maybe you're using the quadratic form divide. Maybe you're using your zero function in your calculator. It all just kind of depends. I mean, if we have x squared, plus x plus five over x minus one. And we want its roots. Well, once again, we just set this up. Can everyone see this kind of thing? Business? Well, once again, we just set the top equal to zero. This time, we don't need to use our calculator unless we want to, I suppose. We have an A and a B and a C, and this is quadratic. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. All divided by two times a. And in this particular case, I mean, if we plug that into our calculator, we're going to get an error, right? The square root of negative 19 is not defined. So in this particular case, there are no roots. If we flipped this, um, can I, can I go on? Does anybody have any questions? Still writing stuff down, anything like that? If we flip this, x minus one over x squared plus x plus five, and we ask, for the roots, well, we'd once again set the top 
equal to zero. This time, we wouldn't presumably have to mess around with our calculator's root finding. No need for the quadratic formula. We just add one to both sides and solve this. The root is at one. So, as I, I sort of said this earlier, but the exact method you use for finding the root of a polynomial varies. You could do it like this if it's a very simple polynomial, or like this if it's a quadratic, or using technology if it's more complicated than that. But however you do with the details, if you've got a rational function and you want its roots, you're setting the top of that rational function equal to zero. And that is one half of the stuff we want to talk about today. Does anybody have any questions before we move on? Then roots are a familiar word. I mean, we talked about roots earlier in the course. Maybe less familiar. Depending on your background, are the idea of vertical asymptotes. At the very least, we haven't talked about anything like this in this course. And I would like to see. I would like to discuss these things in light of a concrete example. I'd like to let r of x be 2x divided by x minus 1. And I'd like to ask a question. What happens near x equals 1? You notice that word near at x equals one. There's a division by zero error. So at x equals one, this uh, this function is not defined. But what happens in a near it? Well, let's bring back Desmos. Let's clear out the, the tritus, 2x divided by x minus 1. Here is Give me just a moment. Here is x equals one. At x equals one, this function is not defined. But we asked what happened as x gets close to it. And the answer appears to be, let me make this more visible by thickening that. 
The answer appears to be that as X gets close to one, this curve sort of climbs up this line, like ivy climbing up a wall. And as we drag this curve up and up, this is just getting closer and closer to looking like a vertical line. Similarly, if we go down, now this curve is kind of climbing down this vertical line. It's hugging it again like IV and is sort of climbing down it. This is an example of what we call a vertical acid coat. And let's try to formalize this a little. Vertical acid coat. Our vertical lines at values of X that give division by zero errors. The curves, the graph I mean, crawls up or crawls down the vertical so if we have some value that gives us a division by zero error, there's our vertical asymptote. And the curve then is either crawling up it or crawling down it. And the details vary. The way I have this drawn, it's crawling up from the right and crawling down from the left. But you could also have a picture like that, where it's just crawling down the vertical asymptote from both sides. Or you could have something like that. The details vary, yeah? but that is the basics of a vertical asymptote. And I've all but told you how to find vertical asymptotes because vertical asymptotes are caused by a division by zero error. And why would you have division by zero? Well, you'd have division by zero if that denominator were zero. So to find article asymptotes, Set the bottom to 
zero. And before we even do any examples of this, let me make the observation that roots and vertical asymptotes are obviously found in a very similar way. These are both found by setting something equal to zero. You set the top equal to zero, you get a root. If you set the bottom equal to zero, you get a vertical asymptote. And you need to keep this material straight. This is like when I give a test nine times out of 10, if a student is messing up the, uh, the rational functions problems, it's because the student is confusing these. They're setting the top equal to zero when they should be setting the bottom equal to zero or vice versa. So it's really important to try to keep these straight. Other than that, I mean, finding Vertical asymptotes is just, just a matter of setting a polynomial equal to zero. And I use the word just, but this could be easy, it could be hard, it could be somewhere in between. It all just depends on the polynomial. Like here, let me let me explicitly write down what we're doing. Here, if we want to find any and all vertical asymptotes, we set x cubed minus one equal to zero. And this is a third degree polynomial, but maybe it's one that you can solve just in your head. The cubed root of one is one. So this particular polynomial has a vertical, this particular rational function, I meant to say, has a vertical asymptote at one. If we, if we hit you with something uglier, x cubed minus x squared plus three, well, now, if you're tasked to find the vertical asymptote, you're going to have to set this third degree polynomial equal to zero. And there's not really any way of doing this other than your cultivator. See, x cubed, x squared, three. X cubed, I want to say it was minus x squared plus three, but let's verify that real quick. It was minus x squared plus three. And you just go to your calculator, you can have multiple vertical asymptotes. 
I mean, because a polynomial can be zero in multiple places. In this particular problem, it seems there's one root of this polynomial. Go to count, go to zero. This material, alas, doesn't go away. So we're done with poly the polynomial sections, but we're still messing around with polynomials, we get negative 1.175. And there's our vertical asymptote. So all the material for today is just, again, just in quotation marks, but it's just setting polynomials equal to zero. It's just a matter of setting the right polynomials equal to zero and then solving that equation in some way. Thanks.